Thank you for joining us today on Doc Thoughts, Dr. Zhao. Let's start off by talking a bit about your background. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you do and what else you may be involved with with medicine and technology? Sure. So um, I'm here, I'm an anesthesia resident here in Chicago. My involvement with technology and medicine first started off as a medical student when I authored policy encouraging medical schools to actually have their students to be able to participate and write in an electronic medical record to actually get training on the very system that will soon uh, indoctrinate their life. So one of the first resolutions I authored concerning technology was encouraging medical, school, medical schools to actually have an ability for their medical students to use electronic medical record to be able to look at their patients, uh, write notes, get practice. And then uh, most recently, I was in, I'm involved with a, a telehealth solution that allows uh, physicians and patients to communicate face-to-face uh, -face anytime, any place. So uh, that's essentially my involvement with te technology and medicine at this time. What role do technology and smartphones play in medicine today? So um, the role of technology and, and smartphones, it's, it's, it's rather interesting. It's, uh, it's growing, it's, it's kind of changes by the month, changes by the year. Um, so for a resident, for example, in my position, I frequently use my smartphone to check on my patients. I can access my electronic health record through my cell phone and, and I can be out you know, having dinner or I can be you know, at home. I can literally pull out my iPhone and, and click right into the record to see you know, what my patients are doing tomorrow, how my patients are doing today, and, and the, you know, from previous patients I was taken care of. Additionally, personally, I use as a medical resource, uh, when, for example, say if you're trying to look up a drug, mechanism of action, or dosages, you can quickly flip to your iPhone and look up, you know, your Medscape app and figure out how exactly you want to give this medicine, what your dosages are. So another, uh, another upcoming kind of uh, new uh, utilization of smartphones would be the, the principle of telehealth, the idea of uh, physicians and patients being able to communicate through a medium, not essentially in the same room, but from, from, from afar. There are a lot of uh, individuals who are concerned that losing the face-to-face -face interaction, the idea of touching your patient, the idea of doing a physical exam is kind of being lost when this form of communication between a, in this form of interaction between a patient and a physician. So it's quite an exciting time and we're doing our best to try to figure out how best we can um, deal with these challenges and at, at the same time provide high quality care for our patients. Are there um, parts of limitations with the use of smartphones? Um, oftentimes um, there's, a, there's a concern of security that um, is not being handled appropriately. For example, physicians are one of the few fields that still use pagers. Pagers are by far an, uh, an obsolete form of communication. They're, it's an analog device. Anyone with a ham radio can pretty much hack into a pager, but it's still considered the, the, the gold standard for communication for physicians in a lot of, a lot of hospitals, let's say most hospitals, uh, only recently have physicians, and a lot of times uh, without, their, without the appropriate sanctioning by their respectful hospitals, have started using uh, text messaging as a, as a more advanced form of communication, more reliable form of communication, where they're actually able to engage in two-way conversation with their colleagues and able to ensure proper receipt of the message. Because frequently, you get a page and you can you look at it and it's all garbled up and you don't even know what what what, what's in, what information is in there. But you know when you send a, a text message back and forth, you get a clear message and you can actually respond saying, "I got this information." The notion that some apps are better than other apps is, is a very important issue because a lot of these apps don't undergo the correct scrutiny, for example, that a peer-reviewed article, journal article would undergo or a textbook would undergo. It can get kind of challenging if you're providing that more or less bad information to either the clinician or the patient because these have real clinical consequences. A lot of physicians, uh, particularly those who are not as, as tech savvy who are now trying to starting to get into the fold, are starting to realize that they don't really understand which apps are better than others and they need help choosing apps. As that, that they can find helpful for their practice and trustworthy apps, you know. So that's, that's certainly a, an upcoming issue, and even for patients too. Uh, you know, patients have access to all kinds of wonderful resources online, but when you have them looking at apps and seeing like they have X, Y, and Z symptom and thinking that they have, you know, the bubonic plague, you know, then that, that can get problematic too. So I think there, there's a role that you still need to have that core knowledge, that core clinical judgment, but at the same time, figure out a way for these apps to supplement your knowledge and your judgment and without deterring patient care with the ultimate goal of improving patient care.